Hey guys, Ryan here, and in this video, I'm going to be covering how to record and stream games on Linux. For this purpose, we're going to be using a piece of software called OBS Studio, which is kind of the gold standard when it comes to streaming and recording. In fact, OBS is cross-platform, so that means it works on Windows and Linux, and it also supports hardware encoding using AMD, Intel, and NVIDIA graphics cards. Although if you are going to be primarily streaming and recording, then I would strongly recommend using an NVIDIA graphics card as the NVENC encoder is significantly more efficient compared to the AMD or Intel equivalents. Now that's not to say you can't use AMD or Intel for recording and streaming, but it will just be more taxing on your system, which could impact the resulting stream or the recording. Okay, so that over with, let's crack on with the rest of the video. When it comes to OBS Studio, the developer's recommended installation method is to use the flat pack version of OBS Studio. Although in most cases, you should be fine installing OBS Studio using your Linux distribution's package manager. So for example, if you're using Ubuntu, then all you need to do is open up the app center and then search for OBS Studio. So by default, it will select the snap package, but instead we want to choose the option to filter by Debian packages. And if we just scroll down a little, you should see the option here for OBS Studio. From here, it's just a matter of installing it as normal. And once the installation process is finished, just launch to OBS Studio as a normal application. Okay, so with OBS Studio running, we're just gonna run through and make a couple of changes to the default configuration. The first thing we wanna do is go to the top here, go to File, and then Settings. So from here, you, you want to make sure that the base canvas resolution and the output scale resolution is set to your monitor's native resolution. And all the other settings here can just be set as per your own preference. Once we've done that, click apply at the bottom and let's move across to the output tab. So by default, this will actually say simple. So we need to click on the top here and change that to advanced. So if we start with the first section here, which is streaming, for the video encoder, you want to choose the encoder that represents the hardware you're using. So for example, for Nvidia, this could be NVENC. For AMD, it's going to be AMF. And for Intel, this would be Intel QuickSync. Now, if you don't have any of these options, you can use X264 instead. So under the encoder settings, we want to make the following changes. We want to change the rate control to CQP and then set a level of 15. We want to set the keyframe interval as zero or automatic. And the preset, we want to change that to slower, better quality, which is P6. For tuning, we want to choose high quality and for multi-pass mode, we want to choose the option for two passes, quarter resolution. And finally, for the profile, we want to choose high. We want to tick the psycho visual tuning, which is going to be really handy if you're going to be recording scenes that have lots of motion. GPU, you can leave that as zero. That would only be really applicable if you've got two graphics cards on your system. And then we want to set the final value here as max speed frames to a four. Once we're happy with that, click apply. Next, we're going to move across to the recordings tab. And a lot of this is really going to be the same as what we've just set. However, we're going to choose to record the actual final video in the .mkv, or Mastroska, I think it is pronounced. Once again, we'll choose the video encoder that makes sense. For me, this is going to be NVENC. Now, if you've got a 30 series or 40 series, you can choose this option here, which is the HEVC. Or alternatively, you can fall back to the H.264 if you've got an older graphics card. Again, these are NVIDIA specific. Uh, audio encoder doesn't really matter what you use. And I wouldn't mess around changing any of these. These are if you want to rescale from maybe a lower resolution to a high resolution or vice versa. And then file splitting is if you think that the file's gonna be really big, you do have the option to split it up. Now, if you just scroll down to where it says encoder settings, once again, these settings are gonna be the same as what we just set. So rate control, again, we're gonna be using CQP set a level of 15, keyframe interval of zero again, which is auto, presets again, P6 we're gonna go with, which is slower, better quality, tune in is high quality, and the multi-pass mode, we're gonna set that as two passes or quarter resolution. And finally, profile is main again, take the option for psycho visual tuning, and set the max B frames to four. Once we're happy with all of this, click apply if it's applicable, and then click OK to close down the window. The last part of this video is going to be covering available sources that OBS Studio supports. But as a general rule, if you're going to be streaming or recording a game or full screen application, then I would recommend a window capture method as this is less intensive on the system. Now you have two options here. You have the Windows Capture 
Pipewire, and a Windows Capture X Composite for Wheeland and XOR desktop sessions respectively. Now, alternatively, if you wish to record or broadcast your desktop before you switch to your application, then you do have options here for screen capture, which once again, you've got two options. You've got screen capture Pipewire, or you have screen capture XSHM, which again is for Wayland and XOR respectively. Or if you're like me, you can use a combination of both. The final little thing I'm gonna look into is the recording equipment. So for example, if you've got a microphone, now you can technically add all of these inputs under sources once again, but I found it is technically easier to do it this way. The way you do that is you go to where it says mic and aux, click on the little button here, go to properties, and then just simply select your input from the list here. So as you can see, I've got my Yeti, as well as my ProX gaming headset, and then just my inbuilt uh, jack for my motherboard. So with that, you've now got a brilliant method of recording and streaming games on Linux using OBS Studio. Now, of course, the settings that I've demonstrated in this video can be adjusted based on what hardware you've got and really just your expectations and video output quality. But at least this is a good starting point for you. So in conclusion, OBS Studio is the go-to tool for recording and streaming on the PC platform. And the fact that it works out of the box on Linux is fantastic. As always, thanks for watching this video today. And if you did find it helpful, please don't forget to leave a like, share the video, and then subscribe to the channel for more content like this in the future. Thanks again, and I'll catch you again next time. Goodbye now.